Welcome to Spirits Podcast, episode 14, Ghosts of Orlando. That's such a good title, Julia. Good job. Thank you so much. Uh, we are so excited to give a couple of shout outs this week to some folks who have been great with us on Twitter. Uh, Misha of Ars Paradoxica and Bright Sessions fame. We love you, Misha. Two great shows. Check him out. John Grills of Small Town Horror, Entwined Podcast, Jess, Amalia Rodriguez, the infamous Sergio, whose Twitter name I love. Every it's time okay. I'm, like, I'm like, oh, it's the infamous Sergio. He tweeted us. Um, Jim McDonnell of Our Fair City. McDonnell, sorry, my Irish cred is not too strong. Hallie, Boda Speaks. Tane, Zeke Gonzalez, Laura Hayes, Ian Kroll, Shannon Sawyer, Todd Faulkner of Uncanny County. Thank you so much, guys. We love hearing from you on Twitter. You should definitely tweet at us. Tell us your thoughts. Tell us your suggestions. Tell us what you want to hear about because we love hearing from you. We were a little quiet this week because Julia was selflessly helping me move apartments. If you guys doubted at all that we were actually best friends, uh, Julia just passed the best friend test, number one of two, which is to help me move. I don't think I'm taking you to the airport yet. No, I don't think so. I will at any time. Um, But no, it's all good. Uh, Also, so this episode we recorded several months ago, actually, soon after we launched the podcast with our friend Matt, who is such a great guest. He had so many great stories to tell. You can tell he's an actor, right? Because he had like just great way of speaking. He did great Foley work. There was a lot going on there. Yes, and we were also drinking this, uh, I don't know, dubiously acquired bottle of super vintage Jack Daniels. The We cut the story, but basically a guy that was friends with Matt uh, left a bottle of like vintage whiskey at his house. And that he then, got from his grandma's house after she died. Right. Uh, <laughs> dude was a dick. Yeah. Never spoke to Matt again. And Matt, out of spite, Kept drank the Grammy the whiskey. whiskey. Right. Uh, we drank it together. It was great. Anyway, point being, uh, we hit the microphone stand at some point. So if you hear a little like weird bumping, that's what happened. Uh, if you have a second, please rate and review us on iTunes. It helps us get the word out about the show. And we really appreciate like hearing what you guys think about the show. And we do. Spreading the love. I know the more countries we are reviewed in, I feel like our, our, I don't know, our spooky reach is extending around the world. <laughs> spooky reach. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and finally, shouting out Alco Hollywood, who ran our first promo on another podcast. Also, the episode is super good if you haven't listened yeah, to it. Yeah, we it's really enjoyed really it. really creepy and weird and amazing, and it's um, like a pulpy Japanese horror body horror movie and it's if that's up your alley go listen to the episode right away because it's amazing yeah they drink they watch movies it's really really great i love that there's this whole like drunk cast podcast universe we're part of now um so thanks guys and if any of you listeners have a podcast want to feature us on a podcast want to recommend us to be featured on other podcasts uh you know you'll just be our favorites enjoy spirits podcast episode 14 ghosts of orlando So today we have a special guest with us because clearly I drink more than enough. We invited our bartender friend, Matt. (laughs) Matt is going to come and talk to us about a, not so much myth or legend, but like a super weird kind of mystical element that comes from his hometown down in central Florida. Uh, You want to start us off, Matt? Well, for sure. For sure. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Of course. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for bringing us some spiteful granny whiskey. Yeah, absolutely. So, Casadega, Florida. Casadega, Florida stemming from Casadega, New York, full circle. Interesting. Where we sit right now. Yes. Well, not not in Casadega, Casadega, but in New York. In New York, guys. (laughs) Yeah. Let's not... Casadega reminds me of Talladega Nights, which I hear is a film. Casadega, Florida. An outpost of the grander so there's, Casadega, there's, New York. There's two stories here. Okay. There's the story before I did research on Casadega, Florida, to be Great. prepared. I have notes. The authentic I have grassroots notes. story. Those are my notes. I like the sound effects this episode. That's like, everybody I feel like knows they're already stepping up, man. Yeah. Yeah. Theatrical Listen, I brought expertise. it. I bring, I bring the noise. I bring the noise. A couple months into our launch already, but bringing the noise now. That's okay. Exactly. Sometimes, you gotta ramp up. Listen, leave them something to, to you know, enjoy. That's it. Show a little bit of... <laughs> a little bit of shoulder. <laughs> that's a it. A little bit of skin. That's it. All right. So, there's my story of Casadega, which is a 17-year-old driving... About an hour and a half out of my town. It is still in central Florida, but it's a ways away. I'm from, like, Orlando, Orlando. And this is a little bit off the beaten path. Cool. 
So to get into Casadega, Florida, you essentially drive down this one lane road mm-hmm. up and down many hills. High dramatic potential. Now already. you have to understand, too, it, this is Florida. Right. There's no hills in Florida. Florida yeah. is flat and under the sea level. It's true. You would think it's all swamps. So to drive on hills in this place in general, odd. As you're going, and sometimes you have to pull off because people are trying to leave the town. Naturally. So well, every now and again, you should typically go during sunlight. That's a good rule. Don't, uh, cause at night it's a very scary, uh, situation. It's a good rule for any place that's going to be on our show at some point. Probably. <laughs> Don't go there at night. Probably. A <laughs> Don't t- go at night. That's a good, yeah, yeah. Good preface. <laughs> so as you're driving in, you start to lose cell phone reception, which I guess isn't crazy. Some places you, you go to the subway, you lose cell phone reception. You do. You drive over hills Mike gets in splashed. Florida. You know, a little bit risky. The subway smasher. <laughs> That's a different myth for a different joke. day. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Wait, no, that's you might, fact. You might not know yeah. that three months out. But no. You know. <laughs> right. There was a guy. Multiple guys. Maybe people. girls. Who knows? who knows? I've never seen the Subway Slasher. Me neither. We don't want to be sexist about it. No, exactly. Right, equal opportunity it, slashers. I hope it's a woman. <laughs> Is that bold? Is that a bold thing to say? It's a bold statement. Like, We're not, we might be, not agree with you. It would be a plot twist. No, that would be dope. It would. And I hope she's only slashing people that, like, catcall her. I love that idea. Nice, but I think it's mostly been Head women, which sucks. Accepted. Yeah. We've qualified the, the subway slasher. Great. There we go. Um, but probably not the case. So Losing cell reception as you go into Casadega. So losing cell reception. And then um, the car's um, clock started to get funky mm. and, like, wasn't keeping the right time. Mm. This is x file shit right here. Now, this was also, like, before, like, everybody had, like, really dope cell phones. Like, we still had flip phones. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So... Are certain people's like cell phone clocks stopped working? Oh, yeah, um. one or two still had, but like I personally had Sprint and Sprint in Casadega, Florida, fucked up, not working so hot. Mm-hmm. So you get in, and it's a really small town, and it's almost cute. Yeah, it's almost cute. There's this hotel that's super old that you walk through, and it just feels like haunted. Everything there mm-hmm. feels haunted. Awesome, you know. So all of the stories behind Casadega are. That it's a spiritualistic commune, which is true. Um, a lot of people think it's the third point of the Bermuda Triangle. It's not. I've just found out. <laughs> but like, but good rumor. Multiple That's like people. No, because I was. Lore. So I talked to my sister before I came here to. Like, oh my god, sources. Yeah. Well, no, just so, so I could be research. like, you still live in Orlando. Like, what are your thoughts on right. Casadega? And that's one of the first things she said is like, well, it's the third point of the Bermuda Triangle. Wow. It's not. Nice. That's a great like dramatic point though. Now, yeah. but it is. It's, See, li- so it's it folklore. Is sounds legit. Point geometry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Trying that was too much for my for my drunken brain to really capacitate. <laughs> over the head. Yeah, that went well over it. It came back like a boomerang. But <laughs> nice. But so there's many misconceptions. The other one, now this one I just I wanna believe and I haven't really found anything that disproves yeah. it. Some old woman. Dramatic pause. <laughs> who works at the hotel. Some old woman who works at the hotel as soon as you come in. Yep. She told us that everybody born in Casadega is typically a medium and usually wow. you live your whole life in Casadega and you die in Casadega. Right. Snap. And they typically cremate and then dump ashes into Spirit Pond. <gasps> now Spirit Pond, there's two lakes and we're going to get back to it. We're going to find the mm-hmm. specificity. So because if people want to recreate the journey, that's they can it. Go they can it. do it themselves. Find the same old woman or her granddaughter. It's all the same. Who knows? Life Pro- and death, maybe it's the exact same person. Maybe it is. Mm-hmm. It's a very spiritualistic place. Reincarnation. Who knows? They say that everybody dumps their ashes into Spirit Lake. Yeah. Spirit Lake is where you go. It's the resting place. Now the founder of Casadega, Florida who is George Colby, he is supposedly buried in between these two lakes. Now, there's also rumor that his body was shipped to New York and is buried in Casadega, New York. Mm -hmm. And then there's other theory that he was cremated and dumped in the Spirit Lake. I'm I'm hearing a lot of cool parallels about kind of like concentrating the power, right? Like keeping, if if being born there imbues you with some special gift, then when you're, you know, when you pass, your remains are are returned to the the earth from whence you came, sort of thing. See, Amanda thinks of that. I go, I really hope no one's drinking out of that lake. Yeah, I don't think it's a source of... (laughs) Yeah, I would um, hope not. It's not potable water. I don't think so. 
Yeah. I hope not. I, I don't also know. Hope not. I hope you did not drink maybe any the tap water when other you were in Tasmania. Maybe the other leg yes. whose name that I, I I'm cannot remember. I'm thinking of like remember. the two, like two ventricles in the heart, you know, kind of like. Makes, More or less. Anyway. George is buried in the middle of this lake. Yes. Everybody's spirits. Within it. They live there. There's these uh, specific places where the energy, you test it through the oh, rods. Oh, the, um, the, the divining water, rods. The divining? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And which have been used for like they ha- they, that's, centuries. That's just, yeah. It's super yes. old. So uh, Sonoma. Yeah. Right? Is one of those like, spots. Like a, like a magnetic pole. Yes. Yeah. Where it's right. super... Uh, they call them vortexes. Yeah. Interesting. So Sonoma is one of those places. The Bermuda Triangle is one mm. of those. And one of the strongest ones... Casadega, Florida. It's Casadega, Florida. Yes. So that's where the the idea of the town comes from, is they tested this land. Oh, shit, and they chose it. And they chose it. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. There's a real story that we're going to tell about how Casadega came to be. All right. But oh. first, we're going to tell my story. All right. Because Lord. that one, right, exactly. Yeah. That one had a little bit more Oops, je ne sais quoi, <laughs> you know. So we have the facts, right? Casadega is is a spiritualistic commune. It is a spiritualistic commune. Founded it's founded by, in a vortex yes. by this guy, George Bell. George Nick. Colby. Colby. And he he was chosen. Lived a life. Lived a life. And then was buried in between the lakes. In between the lakes. He's he's in Casadega. Cool. Um, but everybody that would... Co- no, we're going to do that part second. No, we're tell, yeah, the, tell us about we're do your my time. Story. Right, so right, so I'm the there. Facts, and then you visit. You see so I'm woman. at the hotel. The old woman tells us about Spirit... Uh, not Spirit Lake, Spirit Pond. Spirit Pond. I had to look that up. In a pond. Yeah. I swear she said lake, though. <laughs> so we go to Spirit Pond. Before we go to Spirit Pond, because this is... We all get our palms red. Expensive as fuck. Fuck, first of all. It's probably how they make all their goddamn like money there. Like $35 per person. Yeah. Too much. Too and much. we wanted to all go together, and they were like, nope, no. separate. They don't let they you do that. that. Yeah. But that shit was crazy. So that happened. Set the mood with some palm reading. Nice. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's a little bit, it's like dusk. It's getting dark. We're right on the cusp, so oh, we were man. like. Which we don't want. So <laughs> let's hit Spirit Lake to find out about it. Now, the other thing about Casadega, one road goes all the way through the entire town. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you ride on one road for like 10 minutes to get through. Yeah. But you pass by every single person's house mm-hmm. and every single thing. And to get to Spirit Lake, you have to take that road. Yep. But it's right, it's the first thing as soon as you hop on that road. So we hopped on that road, got out. Now, two of the people that we were with were too like even shook to get out of the car. Really? Damn. But me and my friend were like, F- I'm going. Based so- on reputation? Is it yeah. reputation or just like they were like feeling uh, some vibes they, well, going on? Well, reputation. Or they were they were shook from the reading. Okay, you sure. Know? Yeah. And so it was a combination. It was mm-hmm. getting dark. Yeah. And there's a chair. Hold on, I have to find it because it's one of. So there's this folklore. It goes like all over. It's called the devil's. The devil's uh, chair. The or, devil's yeah. chair. The devil's chair is this thing. There's mm-hmm. one in London. There's one in Illinois. There's one. They're they're all I'm over. Puzzled. But it's this place where. If you if you dare to sit there, supposedly you're, you you will talk to the devil. Um, Wheelchair, rock formation chair. No, so for this one, the one in Casadega, Florida, which Google it if you don't believe me, is um, this bench that's right at the edge of the lake. Mm-hmm. I see. And um, if you leave a beer can there, the next day the beer will be gone, uh-huh. but there will it won't be opened. The devil is oddly specific. The can won't oh, be open. The can is empty. The can but is sealed. empty, but sealed. Oh, that's kind of cool. Multiple, that's pretty multiple people say that that's what that's happens, pretty or that it's open, but probably that's like a person that drank it. Is right. the devil like really specific? Like he'll only drink PBRs, or like in Florida, maybe you know, <laughs> just knowing that yeah, it's in natty Florida, light. it might be, it might be some natty <laughs> bow. It might be some natty light. Who knows? What's natty bow? Natty bow is the uh, Maryland. Uh, like DMV uh, version uh, of Natty Light. I wanted to shout right. that out for all your DMV viewers, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure there might be one of, maybe three. Who knows? We'll, we'll you know. see. Maybe Tweet us. Maybe three hundred. Tweet us and let us know. Let's find out. We get out of the car, me and my friend, and I started running towards the lake. This is a young spry. <laughs> let me find out about it. And I thought everybody came out with me. And it turns out, like, as far as I was, I was essentially alone. Oh, no. You know? Oh, no. Never So a good I whipped thing. my head back around to see if anybody was by me because I right. swore there was somebody next to me running. Oh, God. And I turned my head, and for everything, I put my life on this. 
I saw this red orb, and it <gasps> shot past me. Oh, no. And I followed it, and it went straight into the lake. Oh, and no. And I fucking stopped. <laughs> and I turned around. <laughs> Get and I went car. right back to the car and I said, it's time <laughs> to, to go. fucking go. <laughs> we don't need to be board. here anymore. <laughs> now, wow. that's just my personal experience. Never told any of these friends about this. Really? This is for me and me alone. They, they were just, just, they were just like, I guess it's time back. to go. It's a th- but wow. I'll never in my life. So let's deconstruct it. Did you feel any any vibes? I, when I was running to the lake, yeah. I was certain I was surrounded by people. It felt so as was if it like there an, was like something a, a good else. Energy like you? all your friends were with you, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I guess it was good. It was yeah. definitely like I it was on like, an adventure and somebody was with me. Right. Sure. It, it wasn't like something was chasing. No, you. not at all. all. Right. And to turn around and and to see that. Wow. It, you know. Yeah. It was odd. It was it was uh, fucking terrifying to be honest. But <laughs> were like, there ripples in the water when it went in? No, that would be some shit. No, but it did shoot straight into the lake. Mm. Yeah. I'm and and. That was the seamless, like a dolphin, just going more or less. The water. It just wow. disappeared, or like an Olympic Chinese diver. It was uh, just a diver. red <laughs> circle that vanished wow. as soon as it got to the lake, oh, and that shit. fucked that's me pretty, up. That's pretty. That's uh, pretty unexpected. It was, yeah, yeah. For I sure. I mean, like in real life, but with thinking about like pr- like presences that you see, you can see like a glowing. Well, if you watch like like orb. dumb shit, like I do, like fucking ghost adventurers yeah. or any of that <laughs> bullshit, like that's how they describe. True. That's how anybody that ever sees spirits describes seeing them. They as love orbs. a good orb. Not yeah. as mm-hmm. not as beings. The red's very distinct to as, me. Maybe it was, it was a dusk. red. Yeah, it was dusk. It right. would the sun was setting. So. I hop back in the car. We're fucking done here. <laughs> My friend's, like, exploring. He won't sit in the devil's chair because he's afraid. Right. But he, like, walks up to it and explores That seems like it. a good human instinct. Yeah, rise the man. <laughs> he knew what was up. So he eventually comes back to the car, and we drive through this one road to get out. Now, I'll never forget this. It was very specific. Twelve deer on this road yeah. at separate times ran out in front of our car. Like, almost hit them? Or, or no, like, we, we would okay. stop. We weren't going that fast. We yeah. were slowly, we were looking at the town. We were seeing sure. how people lived. Very yeah. backwoods, mm. uh, deliverance-esque living. Nice, fair um, enough. Like, rusted bicycles in the front yard. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I know. I rusted know. lots of stuff. You I know. drove through, through Florida once or twice. <laughs> exactly. It was very backwoods. Um, but... I'll never forget. Twelve deer. Twelve deer. Specifically wow. twelve. I don't know what that number means. I'm trying to think, like, what could that it's represent? It wasn't like, thirteen. Like, did that have been fucking terrifying? That would have been yeah. terrifying. Thank God it didn't You just didn't see the one that crossed behind you right. guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. And that was the last one, maybe. Probably. Yeah. So we get, and whoever got out of the, the car last first one, is going to die first. Is still going to crush your path. Who knows? Mm. Maybe that's a very... So, important like, thing for me. Yeah. Better hope you don't see no deer in the future because it means you might gonna die soon. Maybe that is, that's how I'll die. <laughs> I'll be trampled I didn't want to say it, deer. but that's what I thought. Oh, I went there. In front of your car. And who knows? Boom. I was gonna say, like, if there was 13, whoever gets out of the car first is the one who dies first. <laughs> yeah, easy. Easy. That would have been not me. I was right. done. I was done getting out of the car. Um, And then we rode through uh, the hill. It was dark by the time we finally got to the front yeah. of the town and onto the hill. And uh, that was fucking terrifying. Um, Yeah. And then we finally got out of the hills and got cell phone reception and became people again. But that was such a specific experience. And there is. You can, as soon as you get on those hills, you feel different. Something. You you feel different. Sure, you're isolated. There's all this mythos around you. Right. It it feels like a different era. It's an energy. Wow. And it is. It does feel like a different era. Because the town itself is is super old, was established a long yeah. time ago, mm-hmm. um, but my person that was my personal experience with Casadega, Florida. What mm-hmm. else exists about this town? Now, Casadega, Florida. A lot of people where I'm from, anyway. The story is that it's the third point of the Bermuda Triangle, which it's not. I see. It's not. It's its own separate thing. It has cool. the vortex the same way the mm-hmm. yes. Bermuda Triangle, and that's how it gets swept up. The divining vortex. But it's not the same. They're two totally different places. Uh-huh. Um, the, the real story of Casadega, Florida is kind of fucking crazy, hilarious, and, like, spooky. Historical story. Yes. The my historical, favorite. the truthful story. Listen, man. This is all your truth. That's true. That was my personal truth. This is, this is, I'm bringing out my notes now. Here we go. Oh, 
sound effects. Yep. <laughs> so the truthful story, George Colby, 27-year-old medium. Our founder. Our founder of Casadega. He would oftentimes go to this spiritualistic seminar mm-hmm. that would happen in this town in New York that was adjacent to Casadega. Yep. So he would stay in Casadega along with a lot of the other um, mediums and people a part of the community at that time, which was in the 1800s. I was going to say, what time period are we talking yeah, about? Late so, 1800s, yeah, probably? Yeah, late, late to mid-1800s. Burned over district in New York. Look it up, people. It's like the big old cult area. Oh, probably where mm-hmm. Casadega is. I'm Hell just yeah. going to go out on a limb When and Julia does her master's in American occultism mm-hmm. slash cult history, yeah. I slash, you know... Small religious history. I don't mm-hmm. want to be offensive. American here. founded religions. When there we're you talking go. about religions, we're mm-hmm. talking about Cassidy. She's going to write about yep. it. Well, with that, it's definitely. So that probably super synonymous. Yep. So he would go to these um, meetings every year. And, um, and Cassidega West. Cass, Cass, we'll call it, yeah, <laughs> Cassidega Northeast. There you go. Um, and one time. Well, he would basically follow whomever he was moved by. Interesting. Um, so he went to Lake Mills, Iowa. Wow. Sure. Pretty and far afield. Not not anywhere near New York, or at least Casadega. Either of them. Iowa is far from all of New York. I was far from all of New York. The whole the whole kit and <laughs> whole caboodle. Thing. Whole thing. Um, so he was met by an Indian spirit named wow. Seneca. Seneca now, Falls. Seneca was a dude from history. A Roman dude. No, but like also like I think they named they gave a Native American chief the name Seneca. At no some shit. Point. Totally believe it. Mm-hmm. Well, there classic was also- Westerners. You have a name. Gonna stop me right there. We're this good. is your new name. You're, You're now named Philip. You're done here. <laughs> good <Seneca>. for you. <laughs> live and let live. So Seneca told him to head south. This is what it said. It specifically said to him. I wasn't there. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> no that. one was. Now this is night. This is eighteen seventy-five. Yeah. Seneca says a congress of spirits has selected Florida for the establishment of a great spiritualistic center, and Colby has been chosen to lead its creation. That sounds like how Walt Disney picked Disney World. More or less, <laughs> probably. It, it sounds like a, a Florida end. statesman slash capitalist trying to populate his new land grab. <laughs> We we own that from the Spanish date by 1875. Mm-hmm. Probably trying oh, definitely. to populate the industrial expansion. Well, who knows? Yeah, whoever's pocket Seneca was in. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of Seneca got a little less. got a little uh, a little plumper that day. <laughs> and he told Colby, who was with somebody else, but he was obviously the chosen one. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even write that other person's name down. Doesn't Too matter. Bad. Not a part of the story. History will not remember you. Boom. You're done, son. <laughs> so Colby makes his way from Iowa to Florida in fucking 1875. That's a long journey. That shit should take a minute. He got there in a year. <laughs> he got there in under a year. Yeah, he got yeah. to yeah. Florida in 1875. He was booking it. <laughs> now, but Florida, he, like, total swamp. Not like, even partial oh, swap. Total swap. Full blown Z's. <laughs> yes. You don't want to be there. So he's going off of this vision that he saw wow. with Seneca. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's not a. Re- it was an Indian spirit. Yeah. Named Seneca. Not a person. Not a guy. Not a not oh, a dude. Just an apparition. No, no it's straight an apparition. up just no dude walked up to him and was like, no. this is what you should do. These no, dudes it's like are in a- I- Iowa having a seance. <laughs> Silvery. And, and this thing comes out of the woodwork. Literal woodwork. Telling him. Wow. Florida. Wow. You know? So he gets to Florida and, and he gets to different spots and he's like, nope, not it. Not it. Keep not going. It. No. Nope, not it. Not Keep Cassidy going. Gassel. Was he doing like the divining rods or he was just looking at it? He's like, Probably nah. a little bit of column A, column B All type right. situation. Gotcha. Felt it out. He was like, mind's eye, not it. Let's go. This looks close because all this shit looks like swamp, but it's not it. Let's keep going. (laughs) So they eventually get to Casadega and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's hills here. This rod's going crazy. There's hills here. (laughs) Two lakes. Good sign. (laughs) Two ponds. Two ponds. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I thought it was lake. Mm. I really, really did. Yeah. Fucking spirit pond. It'll get you. Maybe that's like Wikipedia revisionism. Maybe someone it might be. to know. It might be, because yeah. that woman told us Spirit Lake. And I for years, I regurgitated wisdom. Spirit Lake. Let's do would, Old Lady Wisdom, though. But if you Google it, wisdom. it says Spirit Pond. So George makes his way 
to Casadega. The rods tell him what's good. He feels it. He saw it. He got the there and he rods validate was, his assumption. I'm going to say, and I don't know this to be true, I'm going to say he got there before the rods even came out the pocket. He was like, he knew. yo. He knew. He didn't even. My have, mind's eye. He didn't Put even have rod, to whip out the rod. Well, Put the rod away, Daffy. <laughs> well. I know. <laughs> you know, if he was thorough, he whipped out the rod. Yeah. And yeah, I and I like to think of uh, George Colby <laughs> as being a thorough individual. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So you can't, you can't just be founding Casadega South willy nilly. I mean, you can't just start filling Seneca's. If you're not right, he, it would be super disrespectful to Seneca. It would be more you than gotta, anybody. Got to honor Seneca would be the native apparitions. Deeply offended. There's the sure. whole land grabbing of his continent, but like. But seconds, past that. Secondly, right. He would be Seneca. also offended. So. That someone would ignore He was telling this white man to take his land. So, More you or know. Less. Right. That, like, what it was he to do? Yeah. What was he to do? 27 right. years old, talking to fucking spirits. Might as well just take some land. So he gets there. They settle. They're doing their thing. Yeah. Um, they invite people there. Yeah. Now, the first. Got it. Like, original settlers of Casadega, Florida were scholars, were very wow. affluent, hmm. super, super wealthy, hyper wealthy for the time. Yeah. And they were coming down there for knowledge. That very one. intellectual individuals. That antebellum 1%. You know, right, <laughs> right, at the time. Who knows how they got their money? Let's not even... Let's not think about it. That's a different <laughs> that's time, fine. different place situation. They're in the South, we know. We know, <laughs> we know. But they came from the North. I mean, these are people that came, yeah, yeah. that would travel North to New also York. also complicit in slavery, but True. Not, not as... But at the time, these were people that were traveling to New York. They were. They were seekers. For, so they had money to move mm. anyway. So they moved to Casadega, and they settle it as a true town. And the state of Florida finally granted them 35 acres of land. Not very much, but... Not like, very much. Yeah. The, the whole town, even to this day, is only 55. Hmm. It's not a big town. Uh, it's a spiritualist commune. I guess it's almost even... It's not a town. Gotta, gotta retain that bespoke town feeling. Right. Yeah. You know, right on the cusp. <laughs> they finally get the grant to be existent, because they were just living there essentially illegally, but they yeah. got the land deed. And uh, then they became not a religion, but... They, spiritualistic community. They're a spiritualistic community that got that 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 is tax exempt to this oh. day. So at this point, it is a spiritual. It's a like, it's a religion. It's a religion. I mean, it's a religion. It's looked at mm-hmm. by the government. As you don't a get that tax exemption for nothing. For nothing. Though apparently, it's super easy to get tax exempt exemption it as took, a religion. It took Scientology a good while. Well, yeah, because Scientology was like you know charging people money. And, and then shit. just taking that. Oh, right. yeah. And like, you know. Ron Hubbard. Although I will say, George Colby, very Hubbard esque, if you think mm, about it. Really? Did he also start as a science fiction writer? No, that would be the. He's got the, that going for him. But you know least. what? It as, is the industrial age. Right. Right? So, Everyone's a little bit steampunky. Right. Mm. Just, just in He probably the wore the year. goggles. Yeah, exactly. In his goggles coach, and top hat. In his stagecoach. Right. For sure. I, sidebar, I love how when we think about like. People moving west or like stagecoach, you know, Oklahoma Plains block. Right. They just have like one suitcase and a hat box. That's it. Like that. That's all you need. That's all you need. Maybe that's all the you hat need. Box. Right. Maybe the hat box pockets. has like the good stuff. I assume. Is was the hat box like the like the night table? The what is it called? The nightstand, nightstand? drawer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where you kept your watch. The wallet, hat box was the nightstand drawer. iPhone. You know, they had paraphernalia, yeah. whatever. Yeah. However, you want to say it. For you gotta sure. keep your opium pipe somewhere. For sure. You have to keep that opium pipe somewhere. <laughs> you do. So, if you, modern day, yep. basically, they refute any type of what that lady told us about Spirit Lake, that's like detested. They swear that that's not the case. Many that people say so. That ashes lake. don't go back into the lake. They're Buried like normal people. There's a cemetery there, actually. So, to some extent, that might be true. Mm. Or it's all a, 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 ruse. a ruse. Right, right. They uh, they move the bodies, but keep the they move the headstones, but keep the bodies like they do in Poltergeist. <laughs> Spirits was created by Julia Shafini and me, Amanda McLaughlin. It's edited by Eric Schneider with music by Kevin McLeod and visual design by Allison Wakeman. Subscribe to Spirits on your preferred podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr at Spirits Podcast. 
On our Patreon page, patreon.com slash spirits podcast, you can sign up for exclusive content like behind the scenes photos, audio extras, director's commentary, blooper reels, and beautiful recipe cards with custom drink and snack pairings. If you like the show, please share with your friends and leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help. Thank you so much for listening. Till next time.